So this is a common question that I get on my streams, videos, Discord, and well, it's a really good question. And again, if you find anything that I mentioned today helpful, don't forget to leave a like. Now, the question is, should you leave the 60 hertz monitor behind and go 120 hertz, 144 hertz, or even beyond? Do you even notice a difference? And does it really actually improve your aim? Does it even help you benefit in any way? I want to give really fast and realistic answers, and after thousands of hours of aim training and even more thousands of hours of FPS gaming, I personally utilize the 60 hertz. I've utilized laptops and their monitors, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 240 hertz, and currently I'm using a 360 hertz monitor. So I've been all around with all these monitors for years. This has been a question that I searched for at one point when I was buying all these monitors, questioning if it even makes a difference, especially whenever I went from gaming on a laptop and then switching to a high hertz monitor. Now, there's a major disclaimer when looking up this question on YouTube. Probably the most important thing that I want you to understand when you watch this video. Number one, YouTube displays currently max 60 FPS. Meaning, even if I showed you the difference on screen, you're not going to see that difference at a higher frame rate. Number two, your monitor you're watching on also impacts this. Meaning if you're watching a 120 FPS video and you're on a lower hertz monitor, then you're not getting the full representation of the experience. Some mention having a higher frame rate on a lower hertz monitor helps with smoothing out the experience. This is a case I have personally noticed, but it can also cause screen tearing. And it depends on the response time and the refresh rate of the monitor, how this can help impact it. Now this is the biggest flaw in literally every single YouTube video that's answering this question for you. The biggest reality is you need to have a frame rate that matches your monitor hertz. Meaning if you want to see 120 FPS, you need to have a 120 hertz monitor. Vice versa, you can own a 120 hertz monitor, but you need a stable 120 FPS to actually garner the full experience that you're looking for. Having a higher refresh rate does help smooth out the experience as your monitor is providing more updates, but please note to get the full experience you need both pieces to the puzzle. Missing a section only limits the full experience. That's the whole point that I'm trying to make. Before upgrading to such a high hertz monitor, take note of your current hardware and the FPS that you can actually put out. If you have a really bad graphics card that can only put out 60 frames per second, then it may not make sense to spend an additional $300 on a 240 hertz monitor, right? Now, what is the solution to showcase this? Well, I'm going to showcase five seconds of the best video on YouTube that highlights this. I have a link to the full video in the description down below. The reason this video is so effective is that the camera that is recording, well, it's recording at a high frame rate for the ability to capture the motion difference. Unfortunately, I don't have this set up. I'm the person made this video obviously put a lot of time. That's why it's important to go watch that video as well to see that full experience. So all credit to them, it's only five seconds. Now the question, does this improve your aim? The answer is yes and no. No, because if you have poor mouse control or even if you're on a controller and lack the fundamentals for your aim, well, this is not going to magically make those muscles better, provide more stability or get you better aim. Just like better shoes are not gonna make you a faster runner. But what may help is seeing a smoother image so your brain knows to smooth out perhaps the aim. Now, the next question is, will you actually notice a difference in the experience? The answer is yes, which can potentially lead to better aim. What happens though, when viewing something at 24 FPS, 30 FPS, or 60, is our brains are very effective at filling the gaps in terms of movement. Until, of course, a frame rate is too low and is not doable anymore. Or the frame rate is consistently jumping around to the point where it's too jarring for the brain to really understand it. Meaning if you have a high frame rate and it drops down to 60, then boost back up to 120, then boost down to 60, you're going to notice a very jarring experience. It's better to have a consistent experience, maybe locked at 90 or perhaps 60, so your brain can fill in the gaps of the image that you're actually seeing. An example is films are shot at around 20 frames per second, but there's also additional magic that is done to help smooth out the image in post-processing, of course. But a fun experience is to understand how your brain handles this. An example would be if you play something at a very high frame rate, maybe CSGO at 100 FPS plus or 200 FPS plus, then switch immediately to a similar monitor or maybe a different monitor for a movie. The movie will initially appear choppy. I remember I did this when watching Inception and I was playing, I think back in the day, Halo on, on computer. What happens after watching is that the movie image starts to smooth out and looks less choppy. At first, I literally thought something was wrong with the movie or my video player. Remember, film shot at 60 FPS can look odd to us because in real life, 
well, we're not looking at frame rate. It's why movies are more organic at a lower frame rate, because the brain is really effective at filling in the gaps for the motion. The same principle applies to your gameplay. Build a foundation and better aim than move up. I never recommend anybody just spend money for the sake of it unless you actually have the means to actually spend the money for said experience. You will improve your aim naturally and the higher frame rate will provide support to the fundamentals you have built. If you have the money, definitely a solid purchase no matter how you look at it. I have always been able to tell the difference at a higher frame rate matching my monitor hertz. Some claim you can't see above 90 FPS. You definitely can see the difference. You need a monitor though to also match it. Some individuals also report that and to match it with my own personal experience at a lower hertz and a lower frame rate moving up immediately can be a very jarring effect it can also throw off your aim the reason is because you're seeing more frames the additional frames can make an image feel faster because you're seeing more think of it like a flip book as a rough rough example it's moving faster to provide more images versus let's say you remove some of it and you're seeing less images in the same span of time there's also an additional saying, frames win games. Well, that's kind of true. I mean, you have higher frames, which also lowers input lag because you, the inputs, you can actually see which quote unquote frame something was input in. This is such a rabbit hole. I don't exactly want to jump down that topic because there's way better videos on YouTube that can explain the science and the millisecond response time for your monitor to your computer through the CPU whenever you put the input from your mouse. There's a lot of different variables. And that's just not what this video is about. This video is about 60 hertz versus 120 versus 240 hertz. Again, I hope this video is helpful. There's so much on this topic, and from my experience, I pray it actually helps debunk and answer your questions. I even thought about talking about this experience as I change my hertz and frame rate. But if you can't see it, I kind of struggle to ask the question, what's the point? But let me leave you on this thought. That better shoes are not going to make you a better basketball player. They are the essentials at a pro level, but are not... 100% the foundation you need to making you the best player that you need to be. Thank you again so much for watching the video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.